Hello everyone, I am Jean-François Caron, the head coach for Red Cannons. I am more known as Noddle. I mean, as a Canadian, I wanted to be a hockey player, obviously. In Brazil, people want to grow up as football players a lot, but in my country, hockey is the sport. It was either hockey and baseball, like both of them were really my dream just I grew up. Like I wanted to be a professional, I invested a lot of time into it, pretty much my whole life until I started gaming past post-surgery around 20 years old. Uh, my childhood was fine. I mean, my family comes from a sports background, mostly my dad, who almost played professional in both hockey and baseball. So at three years old, four years old, I was already skating. Five years old, I was starting with hockey. So my childhood was mostly school, sports, and being outside because I grew up in Levy, which is a city very nearby the city of Quebec. And that's pretty much what my childhood was all about. It was about having fun, but being very serious into both sports and school. But in terms of competitive, hockey is fall and winter, and a little bit of spring, and then baseball is spring and summer, and a little bit of fall. So for me, it was a full cycle through the year where I was just playing sports nonstop, and I never really had any break. Uh, in university, first of all, I did psychology for four years, which means I'm not a psychologist, but I have all the classes and the credits necessary to follow on to master into a specialization or into the PhD. And then afterwards, I took one year in human resources, which was specialized into management. I think for me, it's a plus in terms of coaching because it really allows me to use my studies towards my everyday job because it helped me understand people. And then coaching is a lot of management also. Like I'm working with kids and young adults. I have to try to find ways to manage their schedules so I can optimize their performance and all of this goes very well alongside what I study. If I was to study again, I would probably take, uh, I would say law as the first option because I have a good memory, which is very important law. I like talking, I hate losing, and I'm a good liar. So for those reasons, I think law would be a great profession for me. And if we're talking more about esports, I would probably do something along the line of like sports psychology, maybe psychology directly again to finish like the, I don't know exactly how it works, maybe master or PhD. That's the beauty of technology nowadays. Everything can be done online. And if you are actually able to manage your time very well, you can work while being able to follow other passions. Uh, one of the thing about me is I was never like the the best into a sport, but I always found ways to uh, cover my weaknesses with my strength. So for example, in hockey, I could apply this to football. If you're not the fastest, then you have to make sure that you're always in the right position. So that way you are covering your lack of speed by your great positioning and intelligence inside the game. And for me, those are concepts that you can easily apply to League of Legends. If you're not the most mechanical player, you can learn to play your lanes in specific ways that people won't totally understand and be more advanced. And for me, this is one of the biggest takeaways from sports. It's how whatever skill set you have, Almost anyone can play at a very high level if he truly understands himself and can use his strength towards optimizing his weaknesses. I mean, I started gaming when I was younger. I played EverQuest, which was like the first online game I played. But before that, I mean, I played Diablo 1 and Warcraft 1 for people who even knows what those games are. And then it was sports. And then I could, every time I had like a, an off day from school, I would go to my grandparents and I would game because they were the only people in the family with PCs. And then that's how I started gaming. And then I played World of Warcraft. I was very competitive. I was always among the top in the arena ladder. Doing some boosting on the side, don't tell Blizzard. Please. That was pretty much it. And then when I stopped with sports and with World of Warcraft, some of my friends told me, just go play League. And I was like, okay, sure, I'll give it a try. And then my first experience was very frustrating. I was level one and I was playing with my friends who already had a thousand plus games played. So I was getting completely stumped every game. A few weeks later, I was better than most of them. And then in season two, this is when I really started reaching a whole other level in the game where I went from 1400, which was silver back in the days because we had point system. And then a few months later, I think it was two to three months later, I was 2400, top 30, top 50 in North America. And then this is when I tried being a professional player, just like everything else. Because like I said, once again, my competitive nature just forces me to always try being the best into everything I touch. And so on, I tried and obviously didn't make it. <laughs> like the market was very hard to enter in NA. 
And for those reasons that I started answering to some of the contests online for coaching and analysis, and that's how I got into the business. Like my first real experience as a coach was with the team I was playing as a sub when we were trying to qualify for LCS. I was helping them because like I said, like I used to understand a lot of concepts that people didn't understand and just applied them to my games. And this is how I got into coaching. Then teams, there was a, a wave where like Fnatic, Liquid, CLG, all made different contests looking for people. And my name got tossed around there and then I started working for Fnatic, I think it was almost three or four years ago. And then I had the chance to run alongside Daler, which really like guided, I would say, a lot of my coaching style. So a childhood memory. From coming from sports, I have plenty of them. But there is one precisely that I would say changed my life. I was 13 years old and I was one of the best players on my hockey team. And I randomly fell at the beginning of the game and I hurt my shoulder. And then the doctor from the tournament came to check me up. He talks to me a bit, asked me how's the pain, how I'm feeling. And then the next thing I saw was my dad over the bay window. Uh, looking at the doctor and asking him, is it broken? And then the doctor said, no, but it's really bad. And then my dad looked at me and he says, well, then you're playing. And on this day, like, it changed a lot my perception about pain, about feelings and about the things and the sacrifices that you have to make in life to truly reach your objective. And then we ended up in shootout in that game and I scored the winning goal for my team. And then I missed a month and a half because my shoulder was actually completely fucked. So yes, I had surgery when I was 20, it was to my shoulder, which was uh, the result of pretty much my sports career. When you're playing hockey and baseball, like I said earlier, it's all year long, which means for eight months, I was getting hit and I was hitting people. And for four other, I was a pitcher. And being a pitcher in baseball goes completely against the laws of mechanics of the human body. And I was not an exception to the rule, which means my body and my shoulder specifically did not take it. It was supposed to be a one hour surgery, but uh, based on the MRI, they thought it would be very simple. And then when they actually opened and started the action, it ended up being a seven hours plus surgery. It was one of the worst feeling in my entire life when I woke up 12 hours later in the wake up room with the worst taste I had ever had in my mouth but I mean that's part of the business like I always pushed myself to the limit and my body ended up paying the price and so be it. The surgery affected my life a lot actually because I had to quit pretty much both competitive hockey and baseball because they told me it's a one-time deal so if I ever needed the surgery again they could not do the operation again at least where the medicine was eight nine years ago at this point I'll be honest like I pushed myself to the limit I lived very well in my sports career and then the surgery was necessary for me to move on with the rest of my life finally on behalf of myself and Red Kalunga I would like to thank you guys at Uninter for your unconditional support. Without you, any of this wouldn't be possible. And thanks to you, we also have resources and the potential to now educate more and more people in the country every day. Thank you.